Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Cheater Chicken Demi Glaze. That's right, a while back we posted a video recipe for classic Demi Glaze, which came out beautifully. But after I got a bunch of emails saying, hey, veal bones are hard to get and kind of expensive and also made from the bones of cute baby cows. And while I'm assuming some of those letters came from the actual cows themselves, or at least their human surrogates, I'm sure most of them were legit and they inspired me to create this alternative version. So let's go ahead and get started. And we will begin pretty much the same way we start a classic demi-glaze. We're gonna grease the bottom of a large roasting pan with a little bit of vegetable oil before dumping in our mirepoix, which as you may know is that classic blend of aromatic vegetables including onions, carrots, and celery. And no, you're not seeing things. Those are some onion skins in there which are totally fine to include and will deepen the color a little bit. So we will add our veggies to the pan, and then before we add our fake veal bones, what we want to do is squirt in a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste, and then sort of give everything a toss together to coat. Oh, and by the way, if we have any culinary students watching, always remove your rings before working with food. As you can see, I have on my wedding band, which is not a good idea. But that's okay, I already have the job. If you're just learning, you got to do everything the right way. But anyway, we're gonna give that a toss before adding our bones, and there's gonna be two kinds. First up, we're gonna add a whole bunch of chicken wings. And the reason we're going with wings is on a chicken, that's the part that has the most collagen, which is the stuff in the joints and bones that turns into gelatin as we cook this. And as you'll see, once we reduce that, we're gonna get something very close to what we would have achieved using veal bones. But this is not just about all that sticky, gelatinous goodness. We also have to consider the flavor. So to get this something close to taste to a veal demi, we will also add a few pounds of beef shank. And I know it seems obvious, but don't include any of the plastic packaging, please. So we will toss in some beef shank, mostly for the taste, but of course that also has a ton of connective tissue. And then what we'll do once we have everything kind of situated in here is roast this in a very hot oven until everything is thoroughly browned. And the reason this took me so long to situate is because this pan is too small. So I probably should have split this into two roasting pans, but I didn't, and you don't have to. But if you do split them up, this next step will go faster. And what that step entails is popping this into the center of a 425 degree oven for about an hour and 15 minutes or so, or until very well browned. Which this sort of looks like it is now, but it's not. What I like to do after about 45 minutes or so is take it out and sort of give everything a little toss, a little turn, so those non-exposed surfaces can also brown up. And then we'll pop it back in until, like I said, everything is very, very well browned. Okay, so don't be scared and don't be in a hurry. Let it roast until it at least looks like this. And if some of the edges of your vegetables or those wingtips have gone from golden brown to golden black, no problem. You want that. And once we've determined everything is beautifully brown, we can go ahead and transfer that into our largest stock pot. And of course, we will include all the accumulated juices, which there should be a fair amount of. So if it was in the pan, make sure it makes its way into this pot. And then once that's set, we can add six quarts of cold, very fresh water. And then in addition to the water, I'm gonna add one bay leaf as well as some whole black peppercorns. And then we can give that a stir for really no apparent reason, while we also raise our heat to high because we have to bring this up to a simmer. Because I'm sure you've noticed by now, every time we make a stock or a soup or a stew or anything like that, we always use the same basic procedure. We bring whatever we're making up to a boil or simmer on high heat before we back that heat down to low or whichever setting helps us achieve this, the perfect steady but very gentle stock simmer. Okay, you see that, how we have little tiny bubbles breaking the surface? We do not want it simmering any more enthusiastically than that. Okay, that's the simmering sweet spot right there that's going to extract the maximum amount of flavor. And I should mention, there's no need to skim any of the fat off the top. Okay, we don't want to accidentally lose any of our amazing stock. Plus, it's much easier to remove off the top once our demi-glaze is cold. And then all we need to do is maintain that nice gentle simmer for just 12 to 14 short hours. So generally, I like to start this late in the evening so I can let it simmer overnight, which theoretically is perfectly safe. But I will add the disclaimer, if you happen to burn your kitchen down doing that, that was your fault, not this technique. But anyway, I let mine simmer very gently overnight, at which point it looked like this. Check it out, it even looks like morning light. And you will notice after all that time, the meat's gonna fall right off the bones, which is exactly what you want. It should be if you tasted it completely flavorless. Okay, everything should have been extracted into that water by now. So if you happen to taste some of that meat and it still tastes like chicken, let it simmer longer. But since mine had simmered for like 14 hours, it was fine. And at that point, we want to strain all the salads out of that pot. And you know I always like to show you mistakes when I make them. Here's one. You should strain that stuff into a strainer set in the bowl. 
Because even if you're careful, you're going to end up with like a half a cup of goodness at the bottom, which we definitely want to add back to that pot. So now I have to strain that and add it back in, which I will. But save yourself a step and just add a strainer in there to begin with. But anyway, one way or another, we're going to strain all the solids out, reserving all the liquid, which we will now reduce. And with the evaporation that's already happened, I probably have about five quarts of liquid in here or so, which I want to reduce to about two quarts. So all I'm going to do is set my heat to medium high and keep an eye on it. And the only way to screw this up is to walk away and let this burn. Oh man, would that be tragic. So watch what you're doing. And if you want, you can gauge your progress with the old wooden spoon trick. And by kind of noticing or marking the level, you can see when you're about halfway down. And I really should mention at this point, how far you reduce this is not that huge of a deal. If you go too far, you can always dilute it when you use it. And if you don't go far enough, you can always reduce it more. So as with almost all things, that'll be up to you. You are the Ross Perot of how far to go. But like I said, personally, I wanted to go down to about two quarts, which is about what I think I have right here. But let me pretend verify that with the old wooden spoon trick. Oh yeah, that looks to be just about over two quarts. And once that's been accomplished, our cheater demi-glaze is pretty much done. So what we'll want to do at this point is carefully strain it into some kind of container, making sure to use a spoon or spatula to press through every drop of that goodness. And before we even think of putting this in the fridge, we want to cool it down a little bit. So you can do this in an ice bath, or if you have a nice big bowl, you can just do it with cold water. I'll just dump in nice cold tap water, maybe change it once or twice if I'm really bored, and in about 20 minutes or so, you'll be surprised how much that cools down. And at that point, it's safe to cover and pop in the fridge until thoroughly chilled. And once that has been chilled, we can go ahead and pull it back out. And we can get a great look here at the magic that is collagen turned into gelatin. And then what we'll do is we'll uncover that and defat it. So the reason you don't need to skim any off the top is because once this is chilled, we can just take a spatula or a spoon. And that fat is going to be very easy to remove off the top. And we really won't lose any of our demi-glaze. Okay? And once our demi-glaze has been defatted, it's now ready to use in so many delicious things. For example, oh, I don't know, steak Pauline? So you may have recently seen us use some of this, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna reduce a little bit here, just so you can kind of visualize what's gonna happen. So let me go ahead and throw some of that in a pan and put it over medium high heat and reduce this down. And what I find so interesting here is even though we didn't use any roux or any cornstarch or any other kind of thickeners, once this reduces, it's going to get all sticky and thick, just like we did. Check it out. That is just that natural sticky, gelatinous goodness of the meat. Well, actually, technically, the joints and connective tissues. But you know what I mean. And of course, how far you reduce this depends on what you're going to use it for. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right here, because I'm just going to be enjoying this on my fingertip. Which reminds me to remind you, this is not seasoned. So if you were going to eat this as is, you want to throw in a pinch of salt, which I did off camera. And then let me go ahead and transfer this onto a place so you can really see what's going on. And that is just nothing short of gorgeous. So this really does have almost an identical look and feel to real demi-glaze. I mean, look at that shine. I could comb my hair in that. If, well, you know. But anyway, just a gorgeous appearance. And the taste, remarkably similar. I mean, veal has a very mild flavor. So I think by combining just a little bit of that beef with that chicken, we got really, really close. So we are officially deeming this experiment to create a demi-glaze without veal bones a complete success. So whether you're going to use this to make the steak formerly known as Diane, or you're thinking of another recipe that would benefit by the addition of this, which by the way is every recipe, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.